I'm going to be uh, trying another drum pad, sort of trying to make it a little better than I did last time with the two slabs of wood, which I've got over here. The uh, difference is that this time I'll be using this cork. It came as like a plant stand kind of thing. I had a sticker on it, but I took it off. And I'll still be trapping the piezo between it, but between it and uh, this piece of plywood here. I've traced a circle. Once the circle's uh, cut out, then I will be using a couple of these little gadgets from Radio Shack. Um, it's just an eighth inch plug, so I'll be plugging into that. Got some spares. I'll always get spares because you'll lose the things. Then I've just got a three foot cord, so I'll be attaching it to the uh, brain box uh, modularly. So then I'll be able to try out different things. I started thinking today about uh, using a microphone or using other forms of input to trigger. And maybe we'll try that out too. So since we're going to have this modular thing, we can. Uh, but first, good old cutting wood. So oh, that was reasonably sloppy. Not really the best tool for this, I think. Um, and yeah, there's left leftover bits. I'm going to have to sand off. There's flat spots. But really... I don't care. I just care that I'm eventually able to mount it on something. I care that it makes a good sound. And uh, there's no point in making them beautiful if I don't know if I can make it work. Here we've got our thing, or, or uh, we'll call it a base plate. It's sanded. Here's our cork top. They match well enough. So the key is going to be to take our drum unit here, the piezo sandwich it between these, screw it down. Uh, we have some insulation foam here that we're going to use to uh, to back the cork. And uh, maybe it'll make less wackety sounds than uh, the wood one does. And my hope is that I'll be able to find something appropriate to bolt onto the back here so that uh, I can mount it. So it doesn't have to be resting on a table or whatever. And uh, then I'll probably, right this moment, cut a little notch out in here to epoxy in the uh, the uh, uh, eighth inch mini connector. All right, this uh, the piezo element is double stuck down. I had to re-solder this again. It turns out this the center of the piezo and I, they're always this color, so I think this might always be true. Is covered in some sort of flux. So you can solder it once down, and then it just p sort of pops off. So the reason these had tape inside the machine, I think, is to hold, actually hold the thing down. So, um, uh, so I'm kind of doing that. Uh, the I'm putting a, this washer here, this rubber washer here, and I'll tape this down, and uh, that should make it so that nothing rests on that solder joint. And uh, whenever shock does hit it, it'll only be very slight because it's coming through the rubber. And um, and yet the piezo will still be in contact with the back. To make this work with this cable setup I'm doing, I'm going to need to fiddle with the brain board. So, we have down here the bus where all the drums come in. I've been obviously you know, testing various ones here, just twisting them together. And so, in the interest of keeping things clear later, the uh, orange and black leads here are the ones that I'm going to use. I'm going to be desoldering down here and uh, putting in new leads so that I have some elbow room because these leads are pretty short. We've got the brain board. We've attached a mini jack. We've got the mini jack over here. Put this thing not screwed together yet. But this old dingus is down here. We're going to plug this in. I wish I had more hands. And we'll see if any sound comes out of here. Here's hoping. Jack, loop de loop de loop, over to this. The answer is good modulation and everything. I suspect, though, that, that will be harder to keep once everything's screwed down. So um, maybe that's the issue with the other one. Maybe the whole thing is too tight. So now, 
I'm going to screw this all together, see if I can tune it up well. Um, I'm going to use that insulation film, stick that in here. I'm going to have to um, find a place to, uh, oh, what is that? <laughs> find a place to bury that somewhere in this wood, and I'll probably epoxy it in with five minutes. So, we're glued in down here now. Just use some uh, cyanar, really, some uh, zap a gap. This stuff over here, good stuff. And uh, I've got these foam blocks. They are going to be uh, my shock absorbers. This stuff is pretty good. It's quite squishy, you know. It's got it's got a lot of bounce to it. If I have, um, I have uh, some big hopes for this. I need to drill some clearance holes in the top here. And, uh, and then I get to try it out. Here's my sandwich. The uh, issue, you will note, is that the piezo is not yet touching, and yet the screws have come through the back. I'm going to ignore that for the time being, and um, just try and not hurt myself on the screws. Got to screw these down more, but um, this foam stuff seems to be working quite nicely. So we've got our drum sandwich here. Uh, in there you can see the piezo. Got this cable that runs down here. It's a mini jack. Um, that sandwich in there, I'm going to thicken the inside because as you can see these very, very pointy screw nails stick out of here. And as you can hear, it has much better modulation than the all wood one. And, uh, and that works pretty well. Uh, the back here, um, <laughs> the back here, I'll be able to mount something onto here so that I'll be able to uh, place them around. It's, uh, this is half inch ply, uh, so that should, that's plenty to hold on to whatever I do with it. And it's um, much more modular than it was, than the other one is. That pops out, and and this is this whole separate thing and uh, who knows what all I'll be able to use as triggers um, piezos are the bare beginnings you can, <laughs> can hear the uh, drum pop when I plug that in and that is pretty good for a uh, for version 2, I think I might go back and get more parts to make more of these, get the proper screws, and uh, uh, and then work on a mounting system.